Welcome to Stitchy Tube, Raw and Uncut, season one. Season many. It's been, you know, a lot of seasons that I've been going to Nashville. Today is the day before I leave. And so I'm starting here with the day before I leave. And then if you continue watching, you can see kind of what the week is like leading up to market. And it's been a busy week. We've gotten a lot done. And I don't have too much left to do. This is what... This is what the to-do list looks like today. Some things have been crossed off and some of this is just a shopping list. Um, so it's just, it's pretty minor stuff like picking up change and um, there are a few charts I might wanna print a few more of. I'm kind of second guessing myself. It's cloudy today. I have had some emails about people concerned that the Nashville needlework market is, is canceled. It is not canceled. It is not canceled. There was a tornado um, Tuesday, Tuesday? in Nashville, it did not affect the area uh, that we have market in, which is in Franklin. The hotel is operational and, and everyone is fine. And um, they said there could be flight delays for some people if they were coming earlier in the week, but really they're expecting things in Nashville to be pretty, where we are, to be pretty much just as normal. Um, of course, you know, we think about, I think the last time I looked there, 24 people already had been confirmed dead. It was a very serious weather event. And tornadoes in the South, you know, I grew up with tornadoes in North Dakota, strangely. You would think you wouldn't see a lot of them there. But I think up the middle of the country, you do tend to see a lot of tornadoes. Um, but where, you know, Fargo in the 70s, you know, I remember hiding in the basement a few times. But we never really saw much damage. Down south here, Hattiesburg was hit a few years ago pretty seriously and it just happens. And I think you have weather weather events no matter where you are. There are different things, but it's very terrible. The loss of life and the loss of property and the injuries and it takes a long time to get put back together for sure. So uh, I'm thinking about people in Nashville today. I will probably you know, get to see some of that, but Anyway, I'm trying to shut some things down so I don't stagger and stop. Steve said, yeah, your, uh, your computer's kind of glitchy, so we may need to do a cleanup. I thought I would start with the new releases so that you don't, um, then you can watch if you want to. If you're here just for the new releases, God bless you. You got a lot to do today. I'm going to start with those. I have five new releases and one big re-release. I'm dewy already. It feels it's warm here in Hattiesburg today and we're not running the air or anything. It just, it's hot. So, uh, I have five new releases, one re-release. I was going to push for a sixth and I thought, you know what? So I'm representing, uh, Tracy Riffle from Hands to Work Designs, Stone Street Stitch Works and Marjorie Massey are three designers that we've been printing kind of their, you know, uh, for Stone Street and Marjorie, kind of their greatest hits. And then Tracy has got um, a couple new releases and a couple of new ones too. So I'm going to show the things that I've done for market. I will announce now that the re-release is Andale, Big and Beautiful, 1827. It was a sampler I bought about 10 years ago and released the chart about nine years ago. It was kind of just at a stage where I was going into, I don't know, my midlife crisis, I guess. <laughs> so it... Um, it was released nine years ago and, you know, people were pretty excited about it. And then I shortly after got, you know, out of the, out of the industry. And when I designed it, I was working on a PC that we had and those original files are long gone. And I was kind of working off of a beat up original copy that was almost a decade old. And so I decided to rechart it and make it available again, not only as a chart chart and it's at the same price, but also as a download. And so those will be available this weekend on my website. So if you've always wanted to get your hands on Ann Dale and it hasn't been available for about six months or so, it's available again now and you can download it, which is nice for those of you living overseas or those of you who just like to have a digital file that's a little bit less expensive than buying a full chart. Uh, I'm gonna show a picture of it here. And it is, just a gorgeous sampler. There's 65,000 plus stitches in it. And I have a full page of notes about the sampler and what I thought about reproducing it. There are multiple photographs. It's just a really nice chart. Do I have any? I do. Let me grab one. This is raw and uncut, so I'm not cutting. You can watch Ruby for a second. Look out! Look out! It is a 
big, big chart. The stitch count is um, 402 by 531. It's a lot of sampler. And so the new chart looks like this in its crinkly wrapper with new photography. And um, the back has got some photographs too. And it's just turned out to be a very, very nice chart. And I'm actually picking the model back up today. I had the glass replaced. So I'll be taking the original to, model, to market. So that's release number one. Um, release number two is a uh, marking sampler that I bought not that long ago, a few months back. I watch eBay for samplers regularly. Not, I haven't been lately because I've been so busy, but I saw a, I think this, was it a buy it now? I don't remember. I maybe paid like $110 or $150 for this. I like marking samplers. Um, and I, I've seen a couple of other designers do incomplete marking samplers that are stitched in black. And I, for some reason, I really want, I really wanted a marking sampler stitched in black that was not finished. And so the original sampler looks like this. And it was, uh, I don't know when it was stitched. Christina Weber was born in the year AD 18. And I'm assuming that 18 means um, it was 1818. That would make the most sense. Um, I don't, it, it doesn't look like she pulled anything out after the number 18. There's just two little stitches, I think, to signify a, a period. Um, some of the stitches are a little bit kind of missing. And the center of the sampler, you can see, there's a seam. Uh, her, her linen was probably very narrow. So she probably had two scraps of linen that were narrow like this. And she joined them together to make a piece big enough to finish her sampler. Now, I don't know, you know, it's hard to say if she planned anything for down below. I love that it has four W's on it up here at the top, and all four of them are different. And, of course, her last name starts with W, Weber. So she was practicing her W's for marking the family linens most likely. And there she goes. So that's hers. It's in pretty good shape. Not finished. I like that. It's wabi-sabi. It's perfect. Here is the reproduction and it's stitched on Weeks Dye Works straw and it's in Weeks Dye Works cottons because the original wasn't in silk and I actually even have instructions for stitching it with one and two strands to more closely mimic the way her stitching was done so it's just five different colors I think and I, I have thread packs too and the linen hopefully is on the way um, I told them I needed it by the first week of March so I'm hoping it's on the way so there's the original. I also ran a seam up the middle and I made a little edging out of, you know, just kind of some reproduction fabric that I had. And then I took a sanding block to the sampler and you'll be able to see it in the photographs more clearly um, that come with the, the piece. And I tell you how I went about make, kind of grunging it up and making it look old. I did over dye the top of it too, to make it look more spotty like the original. So that's Release number one, Christina Weber. It's a great little, you know, kind of weekend piece, or you could probably knock it out in a week. There's one little O at the top here that she did in white. Just one. Just one. And to me, those little wabi-sabi elements are what make it just perfect folk art. We don't know why there's one white zero. One white O. Piece number, new release number two not including the re-release, is the next in my antique series, which has been a really popular series. Um, I know I've seen a lot of people show these on their, on their videos on YouTube. And the first was released a good number of years ago, Antique Locks and Keys, which a lot of people have stitched on 36 count fresco by Picture This Plus. And I finished it with a little piece of trim. And then shortly after, I stopped designing for a while. And then when I came back, I, what, did, what one came next? This one came next, I think. Teacups, I think, and teacups and spoons. Same idea, 80 by 90 stitch count, 36 count picture this plus with silk and a piece of old, tra uh, old lace trim and um, just kind of silhouette, simple. You can choose your favorite type of fabric and your favorite thread, however you want to do it. Antique Scissors and Spools was next, I think. Was that last year? I think so. I'm not sure. It might have been other, <laughs> the other order. 
It might have been. This might have been the second one. But antique scissors and spools. Another silhouette. Another 36 count picture. This plus linen. And I had to come up with another idea, of course, because you guys like these. They're nice, easy little projects. And so uh, antique birds and cages is next. And here's that. And I think it turned out really cute. It's on 36 count dapple by Picture This Plus with Gloriana Havana thread, which is a bluish brown, which is kind of cool. And so there's antique birds and cages. And I think it's cute. I like the little cages. I don't have any birds in cages because caged birds make me a little bit sad. So I like that the keys are there because the birds have all been let out of their cages and they're having a great time. And so that's what that is. So if you have ideas for an antique series, let me know. I told Graham, I said, I don't know why I don't release one of these a couple times a year because they really are fun to do and they're nice little quick projects. So those will look good in a dough bowl together. Okay, now the big one. So this is the last two new releases, which is the last two in the Jenny Bean for the Parlor series. And this is a series also that goes way back. I started it, I think, six years ago. And uh, I think after the second one just really was away for five years. And now I'm back, and I finally have finished up this piece. It is one stitch wider and one stitch longer than, than As They Sinned by Velma Becklin, who sadly is not with us anymore. Um, it's, a, it's a big, big piece, and it's on 36 count Ren by Picture This Plus. I'm going to get the whole sampler. I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze it all on the screen. It's around the corner. And I hope you can see how big it is. I'll come in sideways. <laughs> it's still coming. It's still coming. It's still coming. Here it is. Oop, let's see. Where am I? Here it is. Here it is over this way and you'll see it. Oh, nope, that's where the chair is. Let's do this. Here it is. I think it turned out really, really great. I'm going to close up you the bottom section. The last two pieces are my town and Jenny's house at the bottom. Um, the forest came out last year and there's all the parts. So there's eight parts in all. And it really, uh, when Katie came over and she saw it all finished up, she said, you know, that would make a really nice piece for a big wall. And it really does. It's, um, I think it turned out really great. And Jenny Bean's initials there are at the bottom. And you've got the little horse in the town. And Anna, her friend Anna, is jumping rope. So there it is. It's all done, guys. So if you've been waiting, you can now finish up. That is a big one. And I'm turning it this way, backwards, because it would make a grand scratching post for cats. So those are my five pieces, and I'm really excited. The um, charts are just about all finished printing. There are a few I have to print yet today, and we'll pack, and that doesn't take very long. Just kind of a few odds and ends. And then, uh, like I said, I've got some errands to run, and then I need to just kind of like pack, and I put together a box with office type necessities in it. And, like, you know, pens, markers, tape, zip ties, all that kind of thing. We'll pick up the van at 4.30, that got fixed. And uh, Gramp and Katie are coming over a little bit earlier tomorrow to help me load up the van and then I'll hit the road. And I already have most of my pre-orders in place. There were a couple of people that I didn't hear back from um, so I, I will know that I have to hit those places first. Usually what I do when I get to market, they give you a book. Let's see if I can find one of my past books. So this is last year's book. And in it is the floor plans, the designer's name, some advertisements and things. And so usually what I do, I think I usually get end up with two copies of these. So you can see like last year what I did is I will highlight the people that it's like, okay, I can't miss this. And then um, I make the notes like little circles and highlights and I cross people off as I pick it up and make notes on that page. And that's how I know where to go. The crazy thing about the, uh, you know, the descriptions put up there by companies is you have to write it way before you're ready. So you're just like, 
stop by for new things that I will have that will sh be sure to be great. Uh, I guess some people kind of know in, way in advance what they're doing, but a lot of us are a little bit more laid back, I guess. And we we kind of just wait until we are ready. So that is what we'll do. Sue arrives Friday morning, so I'll get in Thursday night. And um, she's just going to take an Uber to the hotel. I'm trying to do as little as possible because, again, I'm drinking water uh, to keep my gallbladder at bay. And it's been fine so far, but it's kind of looming <laughs> like this possibility. And I'm really just hoping that it can kind of stay calm and be, be a good gallbladder and not a bad gallbladder. Um, my doctor said most people really do have gallstones. It's just that most people don't have trouble with them. So I guess it must be bath time this morning. I already showered, so we're going to be ready to go. The kids will be here in about an hour, so I want to um, finish this up and get it loading. But I will see you guys soon. Um, I'll poke my head in here at the end of all this other stuff too. So see you in a minute. Hello. I forgot one. <laughs> I swear the charts are ready. The charts have actually been ready for a month now, which is why this one is not near in my mind. But Maria Finney, of course, is being released at market. So I've got Maria Finney, uh, my little marking sampler, my two new Jenny Bean for the Parlor series, my Antique Birds and Cages, and then the re-release. So that's six. You guys are probably like, she doesn't even know how to count anymore. I do. I do. So Maria Finney will finally be released. And I have... Silk packs, I'm waiting for the last silk to come in from the thread gatherer. And the fabric is also on the way from Weeks Dye Works. So you will be able to kit this up on my site with the pieces and parts that you need, either in cottons or um, in silks if you like. I think it looks really good. I like it. I do really like this one. It's very pretty. So, okay. Bye and see you in a minute still. Okay. Is this thing on? Hey. All right, so I had an idea to do like Nashville raw and uncut this year, kind of my experience in the time leading up to market. Uh, we've already actually been prepping for market really for a couple months now, but this is kind of the crunch time when we're just kind of finalizing, getting things packed up and ready to go and still continuing to fill orders and do things around here. I also, um, you know, have some different club pieces and things that I'm working on for different companies and so it's just a really busy time. A quick health update. I do have stones. I have stones in my gallbladder and I go to the surgeon tomorrow morning at bright and early and we're going to see if I can postpone until aftermarket because I won't be able to lift anything 20 pounds or greater for four weeks. <laughs> so when she said that I was like oh no yeah that's not going to work because market is I lift a lot of very heavy things. Paper is really heavy. Um, you know, when you guys get your orders, they're typically like in envelopes, you know, or maybe a, a small box. But when, when I get things here, you know, and it's a pretty big order with, you know, 100 or 200 charts in it, it's heavy. And, you know, we're taking thousands of charts to market. And so it's paper is just dense and heavy. So um, I've got to, I've got to see if I can postpone. I was thinking the week of Easter maybe because things kind of slow down a little bit during Easter while people um, you know travel or spend time with family and so I think that might work out really well. Today both of my employees are homesick with the flu the stomach uh, stomach bug and um, they actually both showed up and they were like we don't feel good and I was like don't give that to me <laughs> please you need to go home. So Graham's just taking the day off entirely. Katie uh you know, has some things that she can do for me that I sent her home with. And um, I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to catch the bug with uh, market coming up. But things are going great. Stuff is under control this year, like I said in my last video. And I just feel really good about it. I tickled, tickled pink, purple, yellow, blue, green, orange, brown about everything that I'm seeing coming in so far. I think this is going to be a great, great show. I have pre-ordered lots and lots and lots of charts from everybody that's sending me, you know, kind of updates. So what I'm doing, I kind of was thinking I'd hold it all back until the show, but I think it's Monday. I think on Saturday I'll post whatever this video ended up being. And Saturday, I don't know, what's the date on Saturday? Uh, ba 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 
Saturday the 20 February. Oh, we get an extra day of February this year. So that's nice. February the 29th, the morning I will post my everything that I'm pre-ordering from market so that you can see everything um, that I have pre-ordered and will come home with. And then what I'll do is at the show as I pick orders up and I physically have them in my hands, I will post the quantities and you guys can start shopping from that. I just hate to do it where you can pre-order and then like what happens if there's a problem? Like what happens if, you know, like I had said before, the designer forgot a box at home or um, they left my entire pre-order at home or sometimes pretty much every year there's at least one company that doesn't show up because there was like a death in the family or, um, you know, somebody got really sick or whatever. Sometimes it's even weather. So I just hate to disappoint people by having to call and say, I know you pre-ordered this, but um, <laughs> I'm thinking, I just thought of Pee Wee's Great Adventure. I don't know if you remember that movie way back in the 80s. And he was trying to give somebody advice and she said, oh, she was talking about, I think how she wanted to be a dancer. And she goes, but, and he goes, that's just the problem. Everybody I know has a really big butt. <laughs> so I, I just thought of that. Um, so anyway, you'll be able to see this Saturday though, what I am ordering and it's just great. It's just great stuff. I'm not going to post my stuff until next week though, I think. I think probably next Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll post all my, my new stuff to my site. I'm not doing pre-orders for shops at the show. Again, just kind of for similar reasons. I bring a lot of stuff because I can drive. And so it's, I'm not really constrained much. It's possible I could run out of things, but I usually don't. I usually bring enough that not only can I fill all my market orders, but, um, I also can send home with Hoffman Distributing. Once in a while, I bring old charts too, like Jenny Bean's Halloween sampler always goes and the Christmas sampler and um, some of my reproductions. And occasionally I'll sell out of one or two or three of those because I, I, I might bring 40 of something. Um, this year, I think the lowest I'm bringing of anything is maybe 50. And so, you know, I have pretty good quantities and sometimes I'll run out of an older one, but you can always catch that at Hoffman or Yarn Tree, or you can just as a shop order directly from me. That's about it for today. So I've got to pack orders. I think we've got about 70 that came in uh, since the last time we packed orders. So that I think that was Saturday, Sunday, and so far today. 76, I think I was at. Let me look and see. Uh, yeah, oh, 71. I'm at 71. So that's not so bad. I can take care of most of that today my, by myself. And this is just raw and uncut. No makeup. No singing. I'll see you guys with the next installment. Sing. Bye. Okay. Uh, it's Wednesday. So I skipped yesterday. I didn't make any, um, you know, live updates. I was short two employees. They both still had the stomach flu and I did not want to get that. So I told them to stay home. So things are going great. We are rounding the corner on printing, uh, Marjorie Massey's charts. I think I've got one left and then, um, we're starting printing the stone street Stitchworks charts and they look great. So we're not taking as many of those designs, maybe like eight designs or so, but I'm really excited for the shops to see the three designers that I'm gonna be representing, which is Hands to Work, Stone Street Stitch Works, and Marjorie Massey. Great, great, great stuff. They're great, great, great people. They're great. So things feel, <laughs> it's funny because I think inside, I'm like, you should feel panicked by now. And I don't. So then I'm, but then I think, what are you missing that you should be panicking about? Really nothing. We're way ahead of the game compared to other years. Um, I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. I was thinking about it. I, I never go to the same stylist. Um, I just, whoever's open is fine with me because it's just hair. I don't care. And I always get my hair cut like right before market. So I, I just was remembering in the car that every year I talk about market with the, the salon person and that might be like the only time I get my hair cut in a year. I might just chop it off here and there. Um, I'm getting every day, almost every day, I'm getting information from the other designers about what their new designs are. So I'm also way ahead of the game with pre-ordering things, which I'm very excited about. I am gonna post on Saturday what I've got up so far. I'm listing those things on my site 
as they come in with the prices and everything, just not the quantities, but they're hidden from you. You can't see them now, but maybe by the time I post this, you'll be able to see it. And it's over a hundred things so far. I think it's like, I don't know, it's a hundred and some. And so then that's just, that's not all of it. So it's going to be a crazy amount of stuff that I come back with, but I hope to leave most of this here. I was telling Katie today, I was trying to put boxes of charts somewhere and I said, um, this is a lot of, a lot of stuff. It's going to go somewhere. I promise. We're just, just trying to find places to put things. So what I'm doing now is, um, looking in each box that we've packed, doing another check for what's going because one year I forgot to take one of my new charts. I just left them at home. So I want to do a double check, double check that I have everything in the boxes and things are ready to go. We are still assembling charts, but that's a lazy activity. And there's some other things I'm still kind of working on, but otherwise it's just like smooth. It's very smooth, like it's got lotion on it. And that's about it, no gallbladder attacks. I went to the surgeon yesterday. I have to have surgery April 1st. They tried to get me to do it today. And I was like, well, what does recovery look like? And she said, you can't lift 20 pounds or more for four weeks. And I was like, that's not going to work for me right now. <laughs> so but then she was like, what happens if you have an attack and you end up in emergency surgery? I guess that's what happens then. I'm just going to try not to eat too much fat and hope for the best. And <laughs> I'm drinking lots of water. So we'll see. I haven't had another attack for a couple of weeks now. It's not, it, actually, it's been two weeks today. So not that I think it's gone. I have stones. They're in there. And I am going to get myself, when I have my pancreas taken out, I'm going to get myself a stuffed animal pancreas. They make them. They're very funny. So um, I guess that's about it for today. I did go by Hobby Lobby and got pins because I have stretched something. And I did get some more card stock, which was 50% off, which is great. When we send y'all fabric we put a kind of a, it's not a rusty safety pin. It's just kind of like a, a taupey colored safety pin with a tag on it with the name of the fabric so that you know the count and the color. And so we make a lot of those. It's nothing I buy pre-made. I just have Katie or Graham or sometimes I just punch a bunch of them out. And um, so we have those. They're, it's kind of cute that way. We like things to be kind of cute. I don't know. I think it's good, but I will check in with you later. Good morning. Good morning. I just woke up and today's Friday the 28th and we get an extra day of February this year, which is fun because I like February. The cats are fed, right Ruby? Are you fed? She says, yeah, I'm fed. So we're getting ready to start a day here. Miss Ruby, there goes her tail. Today is going to be another market prep day, as they, a lot of them have been recently. Um, we didn't have a ton of orders come in yesterday. It was maybe 20. I don't know. Not that many orders. It's uh, ordering really dies down right around market, which is okay because we have things that we need to do. Um, I redid my to-do list yesterday. Um, it had gotten full of things that had been crossed off, and so it was hard to see the things that are left. So I just kind of keep adding to and then redoing a to-do list. I keep one going for my employees too. So we have, have a good idea of things that need to be done. I don't know that I can articulate how I prep for market. I have considerably more to do probably than, I'm trying to think if there are any other, I mean, Tina and Terry from Shepherd's Bush also have a shop. It'd be interesting to talk to them sometime. I'm trying to think of other designers who have a shop. Ruth Sparrow used to have one. Hmm. Surely I can't be one of the only ones, but I don't know. If you can think of one, put, put it in the comments. I just might not be thinking of somebody. But because I have a shop and I design, and I've done this for a long time, uh, I don't know when the first time I went to Nashville was. I can't, I can't remember. I used to go just as a shop, obviously. I started designing like a good while after I had opened my business. Um, so just over the years, you kind of develop like um, a spidey sense about what all needs to be done and in what order. To me, it's, I'm gonna equate it to prepping Thanksgiving dinner. If you're somebody that 
cooks Thanksgiving dinner or you have like an other other meal that you make maybe once a year that's real big, you know in advance like what do I have to buy? What ingredients do I have? What ingredients will I need? Um, you have to maybe assemble like you know pull out your recipes, you invite people or whatever and then as you get closer you have things you have to do like I got to take the turkey out the night before, maybe I want to make the pies ahead of time, um, maybe I have had a tough time running down cranberries so I have to go to different stores to find it. So market prep is like that only bigger, much bigger. So and, and it all comes down to timing. So right, the day of Thanksgiving, you start making the food in an order that you have figured out where everything comes together at once. I was watching a video this week from America's, not America's Test Kitchen, Bon Appetit, where they were trying to make the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. And they talked about how one of the tricks, and I've always said this, is making sure that everything comes together so that it's done at the right time. So that the turkey is hot, the cranberries are chilled, right? The, and so everything is ready at once. And sometimes you don't have a lot of equipment to do it on. So it's the same with market. Everything has to come together to be ready to go when it's market. Now as a shop owner, there's not a lot of prep because you go to the market. I mean, you have to like, let's say buy your airline ticket or, or work out how you're going to get there. You have to reserve your hotel room. Um, you have to make plans for what, what's going to happen at your shop while you're gone. Let me shut some things down. Uh, and I don't, you know, I'm an online store, so I don't necessarily have, you know, a ton of prep that has to be done as far as the store goes. I have employees who will be here filling orders, but then you go and you, and you, I've done pre-orders with a lot of people, so I think, I don't have to see my list. I don't see my, oh, here's my list, okay. So this is, this is what that looks like. So it's, uh, I made two columns, people I had placed pre-orders with and the people I still needed to do. I've got four that I still just haven't sh heard for sure uh, from, and then those designers and, um, people I will make sure to see earlier rather than later because I don't know for sure if they're going to have what I need. Uh, and then I, you have to plan your budget. Um, you have to think quantities, which market quantities are always really interesting to me as a, not as much as a shop owner, because I kind of know in my mind how many I'm going to need of something. And I don't know also that that's definable. Um, I did talk to Lindy about it at the Silver Needle once because she has a big crew. She has like 14 employees. I have two, um, but I don't know that I would, tr I can't train somebody really to order for me. Um, Graham and Katie both know how to look up to see if things are in stock and how to adjust quantities. But I can't say, <laughs> you know, so-and-so showed this on their video last week. I'm going to need to make sure to get extra of that in because people are going to be talking about it for a while. Or, you know, with a designer, how many, even, even within the designer, a designer releases 10 things. I know I can look at them and go, that's going to be hot. That's going to be hot. This is a little unusual. We'll try it out by getting some, but we'll see. Because otherwise you end up with this bloated inventory. And I've been in stores before. A long time ago, there were a lot of cross-stitch stores. And so I was in a fair number of cross-stitch stores when I was younger. And sometimes I would go into one and I'm like, geez, even, as an, even before I was a business owner, this inventory is out of control because it just was like piles of stuff and stuff that was older. So um, then, you know, once you, you buy things at market and you get home, you know, as a, as a web store, you have more work to do in some ways than somebody with a, a shop because you have to, you know, sometimes you have to photograph things or you have to, um, you know, maybe see if you can find the best picture online. If the designer does really nice shots, that helps a lot. Um, but quantities to continue are, are strange to me because as a store, like I said, I know what I need and I buy things. Now I buy things in much bigger quantities than I ever did before. I, it, it's, a lo it's a lot more, considerably more. Um, I used to buy, you know, kind of in sixes and twelves with a lot of the new stuff. And sometimes I needed to reorder and sometimes I didn't. Now I might buy 75 of something or 100 of something. 
and even then I may have to reorder. You don't want to order too much is the thing. Um, so you kind of have to think like how much am I going to sell immediately around market and then as you see things dwindling you're like okay this one is selling better than I thought maybe I'll order more or this one's not really selling I may have to put you know in a year I might have to put this on sale and that just happens you can't predict it but shops come in and some of them are just like um, they order in threes a lot of times I want three of that six of that three of that twelve of that which I don't know where that came from and it's almost like it's just the culture for people to um, order in threes I don't know I don't know what three is so that's some people some some people come in and they're ordering those kind of amounts some of the bigger shops come in and they're like I want 18 I want 24 um, and and they're quick about it and then there are shops that come in and they might be a smaller shop they may not be online and they come in with a list so they'll come in with something that looks like this and they'll be like okay Shakespeare's peddler Shakespeare's peddler okay do you have one this time called blah 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 okay okay so Janet wanted one right did Janet say she wanted one too oh you want one one too okay we'll take two we'll take two of that and then um, Barbara wanted one so we're, I guess we'll take three of that so they have a very um, they they very very specifically know how many they want and um, that is a different type of organization I mean that's that is organized to really know that and um, so it just it's it's everybody's a little bit different but people are kind of the same too most people when they come in to shop you ask them um, you know do you want a bag and a lot of people just have stuff with them that they take stuff in I don't I don't do it anymore but when I started designing and I had a booth and then I would um, you know try to shop also uh, I would take the stairs two at a time I didn't wait for elevators and I still use the stairs quite often go to the corner take the stairs it's way quicker the elevators there are three elevators and sometimes one is broken down <laughs> and they're just stopping and starting you know and so there it's and sometimes the doors will open and it's like a wall of people and it's like mm -mm, there's no room and you're like oh, okay I gotta wait for the next one so I do stairs a lot of the time because it's just faster for shopping um, some stores will start at the top do a floor work their way down a floor work down like that some start at the bottom and go up so most I would say most shops do it like that they start at the extreme and then they work in the opposite directions there's five floors I think now I'm on a middle floor which means often um, Saturday morning is slower and I used to panic about that where I was like uh oh where is everybody and um you just then you start looking out into the, the different floors you can see oh everybody's on the fifth or everybody's on two or whatever um, you will have people waiting outside your door or I do I have people waiting outside my door where it's like okay I want to get there first because I have things that I need I don't do show exclusives where it's like super limited quantities I don't have a show exclusive this year it's stressful it's stressful that for the designer it's stressful for the shops um, it's stressful for customers sometimes because they're like how can I get one how do I find one and how do I make sure that I get one so some designers will do like oh this is a market exclusive for a month so it's only going to be available from me to designers for one month after it's released and I think those are kind of cool because um, it kind of rewards shops for going but I don't know some shops get really angry when when um, things run out and they know they can't either can't get more or it's gonna be a long time until they can get more because also I mean they made the effort and the and paid the expense to go and it's disappointing to get somewhere and have a designer even on Saturday afternoon the first day of the show say oh yeah we ran out of that at noon we don't have any no that's it but we made a thousand and it's gone and people really get upset about that I mean I'm gonna say angry but I think the anger comes from like disappointment and frustration maybe a little bit of sadness because they can't be at every booth right when the show opens they have to make a choice and you don't know a lot of times what the designer is going to have I think designers these days are are doing pre-releases you know where they I've seen from my list almost everybody on that list I've seen already what they have and I have it formatted in my site and ready to be shown 
this weekend I'm going to put everything up so everybody can see all the pictures and everything that I've accumulated. It's a lot. It's like 115 things already. And I have six more, I think, to make today, six more listings, and I'll see if any others come in. I got to make my listings too. So, um, you know, people can see ahead of time. And shops like that, some shops really like that because it helps them know, okay, based on my customer buzz, um, I know I need to get more of this. It used to be that you just didn't see stuff ahead of time. Not every designer had a website. Really, most of them do these days have either a website or an Etsy store. And, um, and so we see ahead of time. In a way, I liked it better when it was a surprise because it was really fun to go into a booth and go, oh, look at this, this is amazing. And you still get excited because seeing, seeing stitching in person is always different than not, you know, than seeing just a picture. But there just was something really great about the surprise of it. I try to make my booth real cute. Um, I'll, I'll take video of it again this year. Everybody's got a different booth style. So, um, that's where we're at today. We're going to be packing charts. All of our magnets are done. Uh, Graham dyed some fabric yesterday, so he's going to be doing a bunch of ironing today. We've got some orders to pack. Um, I don't know. My to-do list is looking pretty good. Some of the stuff is pretty minor. Like I have to pick up change. Um, some shops pay with checks. A lot of shops pay with checks. I would say now more shops pay with cards credit, you know, credit or debit cards. I take PayPal too. And so I have to just get my credit card machine and then some pay with cash. So some shops come with an envelope and it's got a certain amount of cash in it. And when it's gone, that's all they have to spend. Um, some shops bring husbands along. And so the husband is kind of like the pack mule where he, you know, carries the, the bags and the boxes. And uh, it's, everybody's got their own little system, you know, in every, there are similar systems, you know, like there are the ones that come with husbands and they sit down and write a check and the husband stands in the doorway and <laughs> is holding bags. And um, some shops breeze in and are like this, 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 and this. And then some shops come in and they're like, okay, tell me about what you have. What's new? What do you have? Okay, what's, well, I don't remember this one. Is that one new? Or I have lots of questions. Some people, um, and I, I'm sure this happens to almost every designer or booth, I, the first few times it happened, I felt kind of bad about it, but I don't anymore. You get some that poke their head in and you can see them look and then they leave <laughs> because it's like, I don't want any of this. It's, it's hard to be, have it be your first time at market because you don't know anybody and you probably don't have a lot of designs and you feel like, oh, I'm never going to, you know, this isn't going to work. Why? This is a failure. I'm a failure. Don't do, if you're new and you're going to market, don't feel that way because all of us had a first market. And they went probably like a lot of everybody's markets, right? Um, and so you just have to keep kind of putting one foot in front of the other. And you find your style over time. And that's important. I think it's important to have a style where people can look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's a Brenda Derbe. Or, oh, yeah, that's a Paulette, Paulette Stewart designed that one. I'm sure of it. That's Shepherd's Bush. I recognize that style anywhere. It's funny that you can, but you can. So I'm going to check my email real quick. Uh, see if I need to print out any invoices. And then I'm gonna try to finish up this morning doing the inventory of what all we're taking uh, as far as charts go. We have things boxed, but I'm doing a double check and then sliding it to a different area. Right now in my house, there are boxes everywhere. Everywhere there are boxes. And I don't even wanna show it to you guys because it's like a crazy warehouse situation. Um, I did get a call from Enterprise yesterday. They said, hey, you know that cargo van you reserved a month ago? And I was like, no, don't tell me it. Don't say it, don't say the words. He goes, yeah, um, you know, the website lets you rent cargo vans, but we never have a cargo van. I was like, could this have happened? Could you have made this phone call maybe like three or four weeks ago? And he's like, but we have a such and such. I don't remember. It's like a sports utility vehicle. So if you want to, you know, come and look at that, maybe we could have you rent that. So I'm going to go look at that today. He said the seats all fold in and down. It might be enough room, but I might have to go to back to U-Haul. That's super disappointing. I wish they had told me sooner. I'm going to mention that just in a kind way that they probably need to let people know farther in advance. Because I feel like if you're renting, you know, a Subaru, like a, just a sedan or something, 
They could say like, hey, we know you wanted this, but we have this in the other, like in a Ford that's very similar. There's nothing similar to a cargo van. You're either a cargo van or you're not a cargo van. And if somebody's renting a cargo van, why are they doing that? They're doing that for something big, right? I either need to move or I'm going to a you know show or I whatever. It's like not just a Sunday drive. I don't need it. I'm not didn't rent a cargo van because I think they're neat <laughs> and fun to drive. They're not that much fun to drive. So anyway, I gotta take care of that today. But you just roll with it because I can't make there be a cargo van. I can't make time go backwards so that they called me sooner. And it will work out. That's what I always tell myself when I start to fret about like, oh no, you know, it's the three days before market and the ink is in here and we got to still print this one chart. It always works out. It always works out. I have to make it work out. Sometimes I just have to have faith that it will work out, but things work out. So it's all good. All right. I'm going to hit the ground running because my employees will be here, you know, later this morning and we're going to have another busy day at work. Bye. Oh, bye. Testing, testing. Hey, it's another morning here. It's actually almost 11 o'clock. Um, I was kind of lazy about getting out of bed this morning, just kind of dinged around on the internet. And now I'm doing some work. I just got a newsletter sent out. That was something I started working on yesterday. The way my website works, um, I'm able to build newsletters with graphics and links and all of that and art and uh, things in it. And then just send them to a newsletter list that's maintained on my on my website. The cool thing about that is when I used to do newsletters, and I, I'm sure some of you used to belong to my newsletter list, I'd send a newsletter out the first of every month, and I did that for, you know, 15 or 16 years, um, is that I don't have to maintain the, the list anymore. People can just go to my, my website, go down to the bottom corner, put in their email address, and then, like, if you guys get off the newsletter list or whatever, I don't see any of that. I just send a newsletter, and I don't have to do anything with maintaining the list. I have a <laughs> I have an injury uh, yesterday, a couple days ago, we got our fifth um, file cabinet and I injured myself pulling dividers out of it. And I actually did it twice. I, I injured myself and bled and got cleaned up and then I injured myself the same way doing it again. So, right? And Zero says, I'm helping too. Are you helping? Yeah, Zero's helping like a baby. So the newsletter's out. I've posted the Nashville previews and I hope you all like what's up so far. Everything that I have up so far is things that I've pre-ordered. And um, there are emails and things I've sent to other people that some of them I haven't heard back from or I don't have pictures of what's coming. So I'm, I'm really trying to be careful so that I don't have to like explain a problem to anyone. So I think everything's gonna be good, right? Right? So this weekend, I've got some charts to pack and a few, you know, things to kind of do. I've just about finished the inventory of everything that's going to the market. I went to lunch with Jen yesterday, and then we went to Hobby Lobby, and I picked up a couple of things for display items. Uh, for Marjorie Massey's stuff and the Stone Street Stitchworks things, I don't actually have models, but I have pictures. And so I'm making boards with those on them with um, clear information about how much they cost so that people can kind of, you know, say, I want that, I want that, I want that right and it's going to be great and things are pretty under control i do have to still i should do that today is, is contact you all and get a cargo van because the enterprise thing just didn't work out and that's okay uh what else i continue to get orders i got some weeks dye works last night i got some exude designs fabrics was it two days ago two days ago yes and it's great. I've got two more shipments on the way. I love getting those. I've kind of considered taking a few Exude fabrics to market just for people to buy. I don't know. I kind of tend to overdo things. <laughs> so I still might. Uh, what else? What else, Zero? Really not much else. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I feel anxious about the show, but not in a bad way. I mean, I'm anxious for it to start. I'm excited to see people. I'm hoping people like my new things. Um, I have other things, you know, that I'm still working towards doing. I've got the ABC Girls Club that I've got to get going on finishing that up. And then I've got um, a retreat to do in Georgia a couple weeks after market. And then I've got in June, I have to teach at the Country Sampler. 
So it's just kind of like I'm kind of looking down the barrel of a whole bunch of activity. And in the meantime, I have to have my gallbladder out. And it's just it's not the best timing. It's not the best timing. So I'm hoping my gallbladder hangs in there for market. I have not had another attack, which is good. Which is good because they don't feel good. And that's about it. The kids were kind of excited to get out of here yesterday. Katie stayed late to get labels done and take them to the, the post office for me. It really just takes such a load off to have help. Uh, because normally by this time I am frantic and up until midnight. And I've been able to keep pretty good hours just having people to help me. Right? So I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, I, I think I'm going to update this one more time and then post it tomorrow, which is Sunday. And then, like I said, I'll put up a quick video on Wednesday with the introduction of my new things. I do have interviews planned with some of the designers, um, that are going to be at market. I try to, I try to, you know, get to some people that I just really enjoy looking to, I mean, I enjoy talking to everybody, but I, there are some people, it seems like I always interview them or show their things. And then they're, I kind of try to mix it up with people that you maybe haven't seen before online, people that I think are neat or their stuff is neat, or, you know, I want you to see how their booth looks. So, you know, kind of look for some familiar faces and names and look for some new ones too. I'm hoping, oh no, I did the B company last year. I'm excited that the B company is going to be there. I carry her buttons. She's from France. She's so nice and her things are really, really cute. So, well, um, I suppose a shower is in order. And then I got to just get back to work. So I'll see you guys with the next video. Bye. Volume one, two, three. Hey, uh, it is Monday morning. I had wanted to post this video yesterday, Sunday, but I'm trying to take some breaks because it's just down to the crunch time now. And I'm starting to feel the pressure of just get, getting everything ready to go. Um, shipments kind of keep showing up. Things I've been waiting for for a long time. It seems like everything's kind of hitting all at once. The bills and the... The shipments so I have to get stuff updated on the website my employees will be here in 15 minutes and so then that's nice because I'll have some help um, today we'll just kind of be packing charts I've got something I'm still working on um, I've got a few errands to run things are still looking really good um, I think I'm fine I'm tired uh, Briar for whatever reason she's in the box right down there has decided in the last week that she really needs to wake me up at 6 30 uh, very very gently very gently but very insistently, just kind of like, you know, tapping me on the face. And I'm one of those people that once I'm up, I can't go back to sleep. And Steve and I stayed up last night late watching The Witcher, which wasn't really that great. We watched two episodes. <clears throat> and so we stayed up probably till midnight. And so I just didn't get enough sleep last night. I'm going to be dragging my butt today. Um, <clears throat> I just had a shipment of ex-Jude fabrics show up. And the carrier was concerned because the package was in very bad shape it comes all the way from Hungary so often they're pretty roughly handled on the way here and um she said I'm so you know I'm worried that there's something missing so I took it all apart and I was like nope it's I was supposed to have like 27 yards and I did it was all there so that was all great which is nice I've got a new color to add actually it's right here new color it's called pine green it's very pretty it's very pretty uh, and I got a color and cotton shipment of linen this weekend that I've been waiting for for like six weeks or longer. So it just seems like, uh, I don't know, it just seems like everybody's busy right now, which is a good thing. Talk to Sue quick this morning to make sure that she's good to go on uh, her trip. She gets in on Friday morning at 9, I think. I get in Thursday afternoon. <clears throat> and um, I'll pick up my U-Haul on Wednesday. Things are Things are good. Things are managed. Uh, it just seems like these last couple days <clears throat> are tough because it's um, just a lot of, you know, carrying boxes and prep work and double checking things. And then there's just this worry, is there something I'm forgetting? And it's just the miscellaneous, <clears throat> the miscellaneous stuff like having to stop and I'll have to pick up some, um, the 3M command strips is what I use to hang pictures up. I'm almost done taking inventory of everything that's supposed to go to the show. Uh, some more ink showed up this morning. I got nervous that <laughs> late last week that I was going to run out of ink. I've got one more of my charts that I have to print. And the my printer is a Xerox. It's called a C405. It's about as big as a dorm fridge. And it uses an ink that I cannot buy locally. And it's expensive. If I buy one extra large supply of ink in the cartridges where it's like extra, I forget what they call it, extra large capacity or something, um, it's about $1,000 to buy a set of the four colors of ink. And I think I've <clears throat> this pack I, I got the, today was probably 
like the fourth one I've ordered maybe in the last month and a half. Um, just because it's, I, you know, the, the inside, the guts of the chart aren't, aren't so bad because the black ink is actually a little bit cheaper, but the covers use a lot of ink. Um, and so, and then Marjorie Massey's charts that I've been printing, her charts are in full color. So I've just been going through a lot more ink, which is fine. I just always want to make sure that I have some here, like I said, because I can't, there's nowhere in town that I could, could show up and they would have it in stock. It's just kind of a strange printer. Um, that's about it. I think, um, I think things are under control and I, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are tough. These are probably, to me, the toughest three days just because I'm feeling the pressure. And it's not bad pressure because everything's under control. There's just pressure because it's a big deal. This is the big event of the year. And really once Thursday, Thursday around noon or one when I leave the driveway with a van full of stuff, um, all the worries just go, like it's all, it all goes. And I don't, once I hit the, hit the, hit the road, uh, I might stop. Well, now this year I can't stop and get hot French fries because my stupid gallbladder. Um, but usually once I hit the road, it's like, okay, got it. No problem. No problem. I don't worry once I go. And I'm the same with traveling like in airports and things. I just, um, once I get to the airport, all the pre airport stress is just leaves. Cause it's like, I'm on my way. Anything that I was going to do is done. And I, um, I think things are going good. My to-do list is getting, keeps getting adjusted. It's not getting shorter, but things keep getting marked off and then I can do the next thing. So for example, if I said uh, on my to-do list, I might have, um, you know, design such and such piece. I don't also put do the finishing, photograph, print, pack charts all on the same to-do list because there's really only thing I can do right now, which would be design the piece. Once the piece is designed, that gets crossed off, and then I add stitch the piece. And then once I stitch the piece, I cross that off, and then I put, you know, finishing, framing the piece. And then I cross that off, and then I, you know, do photography, charting, printing, packing. And so I just do one at a time. Otherwise, your to-do list gets crazy big, and it's very stressful to look at because it's like I have so many things to do. So I just kind of anything that can be done right now, like picking up 3M strips later today, is on the list. And then as I get closer, if there are other things that I think of or things that I go on to the next step, then I add those. And then I kind of start to add things and some of them it's like I put optional. So um, I don't know, an example might be like pick up change at the bank. If I run out of time and I can't get that done, I know how to go to banks in other places and get change. So that, that could be something that I did in Nashville if I ran out of time here at home. So there are things that I... I, like I could wait on the command strips. I could say, you know what? I, I know I'm going to have to run to Target to get XYZ anyway. I might as well just wait to pick up the command strips while I'm there. So that's that's an example of how, you know, some things get to be on the optional list. But the cats will miss me when I'm gone. They always do. They're happy when I get back. When the suitcase comes out, everybody gets all concerned. And um, this will be my first Nashville trip with a van. So we'll see how it goes. It's about a six hour drive. But I will, I think this is all going to just be one long um, video with my releases either, either at the beginning of the video or at the end. And then that way you guys can just kind of get caught up on what my weeks have looked like. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. So that's it. I got to go. I've got stuff to do. I'm going to sit here at the computer probably for another hour. And things are going good. Kathy, er, Kathy, Katie and Graham are in the kitchen making charts. Zero's given his little butt a stretch and we're ready to go. So I'm looking forward to it. I will be doing interviews this weekend and hopefully I'll do some Instagram updates. I know I'm not the best about that, but I can't do everything. I will see you guys soon. Here we go.